Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and with the launch of the Intel i9-14900K, Intel has revealed a number of nice updates to its CPU lineup that include AI-assisted overclocking, which means basically one button click overclocking for increased system performance and some really nice highlights that I want to get into in this video. Now, if you don't know already, the new lineup of 14th gen CPUs will support LGA 1700 socket motherboards, which means that includes the Z790 boards that are already out there, plus new ones like this Strix Z790A gaming Wi-Fi 2 motherboard that I'm showing off here, which includes some really nice highlights, such as five NVMe SSD ports, which is pretty nuts, alongside DDR5 support up to 8,000 mega transfers per second, which is pretty incredible. So that's really fast RAM, loads of NVMe SSD storage, and other things like Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. So some pretty beefy specs, as you can see. So you compare it with something like this Corsair Dominator Titanium DDR5 RAM with 7,200 mega transfers per second and get some pretty awesome experiences. Now I'm going to do a video on this in the near future, but for now I'm using a system that I just built recently inside the Dynamic Evo XL with Lee and Lee's Galahad 2 LCD AIO. Now I wanted to take out what I had in there already, which was the i9-13900K and essentially be able to do a comparison with that original CPU and the new 14th gen. This is a really straight swap a really simple swap if you wanted to do this sort of upgrade is really easy to do because basically this will run fairly simply as long as you've updated your bios you're probably okay and then i'm just replacing the standard thermal paste with thermal grizzly cryonaut for the sake of fairness and then running some tests and what i want to show you in a second is a interesting highlight which is essentially that you can really easily now overclock your system with just one click historically a long time ago at least overclocking was a bit intimidating and required a lot of different tweaking and even recently you have to play around with the voltages and things you can either do it in your bios or in various different softwares intel's got the extreme tuning utility known as intel xtu and that's one of the things that you can use for overclocking purposes and have been able to for a while. But it's now been updated so that the i9-14900K can run with one click overclocking. So I took the 13900K before I put the 14th gen in there and did some benchmarking in there because I wanted to show the differences between it. So as standard, you can see here that the maximum we're getting is 5,500 megahertz and that's the standard CPU. Now, if we swap it out for the 14900K, obviously we're getting a better overall score in Cinebench. We're also clocking in at 5,700 megahertz. So there's already an increase as standard. And then if we open up Intel's extreme tuning utility, we can increase that even further. Now you can apparently get up to six gigahertz now with the Core i9-14900K. Obviously mine's at 5.7, but with some tweaks, you could maybe push it up to six. So already quite a leap over the previous version, although it is just an iteration, because as you may well know, the 14th gen CPUs basically will run on the same motherboard. And this is the third iteration on LGA 1700. But with some improvements, we now have AI assist overclocking. And this is really appealing because it makes it so much easier with very little fuss or worry. So inside XTU, there's basically a button in there that you can click to then characterize your system. Clicking that then runs through some tests and essentially what it does is it checks your overall system to see what's going on and then recommends some settings to apply. And you don't have to manually do these, it's just automatically applied and it's really simple to do. Now it is gonna vary from system to system, but you can see what's going on in mine and then what the recommended settings are in here. And it's really interesting that you'll get these recommendations really easily. These are all sorts of things that you would need to tweak yourself historically in order to do it. And maybe you could squeeze out some more performance if you did it yourself manually, but it's so nice to have this. It's very appealing, especially if you're a bit intimidated by overclocking, but you've always wanted to see what extra performance you could get out of your system. You can now really easily do it. So you'll see once that's done, you can then obviously apply those values. And there are other things to look at with inside XTU. You can see, for example, you can go in advanced tuning and you can still tweak it if you want to as well. There are benchmarking tools so you can test the performance 
two, and there's a stress test, which I want to get to in a minute because that's really important as well. But here you can see we've gone from 5,700 megahertz to 5,900 so already a decent increase in performance. To put that into real world context, I did some benchmarks, for example, with Rainbow Six Siege. Before the overclock, we had about 486 FPS, and that's the average. And then afterwards, getting 492, you'll see the maximum is actually 613 after the overclock, which is also higher than it was before. With Cyberpunk 2077, we're looking at an average of 117 FPS with ray tracing ultra settings beforehand and 119 after. So not mega increases, but still some level of increase. I also ran some synthetic tests with 3D Mark and that included Time Spy. And you'll see there's an increase in the scores there, but also the general performance. You can see if we go into the detailed monitoring graphs, for example, you'll notice the increase in the gigahertz performance as I suggested, a better overall score and then just higher frequencies across the board. So it is worth doing and it is easy to do as well, but there are some considerations and some important ones for your setup because obviously if you are overclocking there is potential for it to get warmer now one of the other things within intel's xtu that i'd recommend testing out is the stress tests so whether you're doing the overclocking or not there is a stress test system in there that you can run and this will let you know if your system is thermal throttling now thermal throttling is essentially where your cpu is running too hot and then it has to cool down a bit so it drops the performance in order to reduce the overall temperature so it doesn't hit the max limit. You can see that when I first started up the system and set it up that it was thermal throttling multiple times during this stress test which is less than ideal. Now I already knew this is probably going to be the case because I've done some tests with Cinebench as well where I was running tests in there and I noticed that multiple cores were running at 100 degrees C or in the high 90s which is often a sign of problems, although Cinebench does put the CPU under a lot of load. Now, this was actually a user error, and one thing that I was aware that was probably a problem, because when I built the Evo XL, I actually only put 340mm fans on the bottom as intake, and then most of the rest of them are exhaust. Now, I could have mounted the radiator on the top, and exhausted through there and then done some side intake fans but the plan was to swap out the standard radiator fans that are included with that cooler with these reverse fans essentially what i'm doing is reversing the airflow here so my goal was to cool the radiator by pulling cold air from outside the case rather than trying to cool it down with air that's already in there so at the moment with that setup which was causing the thermal throttling essentially had three intake fans on the bottom and then the rest of them were exhausting which means air was going through the rad that was cooling the coolant within the AIO. Now we're pulling cold air in from the rear of the case through the radiator and therefore cooling that down and we have more intake fans. Now I also had this set up with a push-pull system so I did actually have six fans on there beforehand. So they were pulling quite a lot of air through and now I'm doing it the other way around. So I'm essentially flipping them around. Now you could obviously flip around the standard fans and you probably don't even necessarily need push-pull. I was just experimenting with what you can do with this case and how to set it up. But I would suggest if you are doing something like this and you do see that you're thermal throttling, maybe think about your fan configuration because perhaps intake fans on your radiator rather than exhaust might be more logical or simply increasing the number of fans in your system, improving the thermal paste on your AIO or on your CPU cooler and then basically running those tests again. Some simple changes like this can make quite a big difference. And now aesthetically, we've got basically the same view because I'm using the Lee and Lee Infinity Reverse fans, but I have a lot more intake fans now. So I've got 340 mil intakes on the bottom plus six intakes on the radiator and then four exhaust fans on the top. Now running those tests again, the CPU is no longer thermal throttling. Now, this is clear from obviously the test within XTU, but also you can see I've got hardware monitor on the right hand side and you'll see there's no red indicators to suggest that the coolant is getting too hot and the CPU is running too hot. So it is keeping in the low 90s now, which is perfectly fine. And generally speaking, with less stress on the system while gaming and such, you'll run a lot cooler than that. But this then means that the system can run at those higher speeds that we've now got from the overclocking and therefore give you a better overall experience throughout. 
and especially when gaming. So things to think about, hopefully, if you're planning on doing this, but also just some insights into it and what it can do for you. So hopefully you'll find this useful. Subscribe and come back for more content like this and check out my tips and tricks playlist to find out more ways to optimize your system. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.